Welcome everybody to our workshop on deploying static web apps to the cloud. And we're super excited to share this with you today. Uh, I'll be repeating this again, but just let people know we have myself and Burke Holland will be walking step-by-step -step through the workshop with you doing exactly what you're doing. But then also in the chat, because it's hard to do this and answer chat at the same time, we have Craig Shoemaker, one of our colleagues who uh, helped write a lot of the documentation for static web apps. Uh, so he knows this product probably better than most people do, uh, even better than Burke and I. And he's going to help answer your questions in the chat while we're going along. So please feel free to fire those away and Craig will handle those. So to kick things off, I'm John Papa. You can find me after this session at, at John underscore Papa up on Twitter. My other colleague here is Burke Holland and you can find him up on Twitter at Burke Holland. And you can find Craig Shoemaker at Craig Shoemaker on Twitter, or you can just find him in the chat uh, for the next 45 minutes as well. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do today? That's the big question. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to walk through as the storyteller, the teacher, and Burke is going to go through step by step through the entire uh, what we call learn module, which is our workshop, hands on, just like you are. So we'd like you and Burke to go through this together in the experience. You're going to get your app in your choice of your web framework, we have four for you to choose from, Vue, React, Angular, and Svelte. You're gonna create and deploy an Azure Static Web App. You're gonna add something called a fallback route, which we'll explain what that is as we go through there, uh, but quickly that's just to handle client-side routes. And then finally, you're gonna learn how to change your CI CD workflow. Well, there's one more thing actually. It's honestly just to have fun because we like to have fun when we do this kind of stuff, so we hope you do too. This is the app that you're gonna be building. And why we're gonna be doing this is because we all start with code. And if you just saw the presentation, this is just a quick rehash of what we're gonna get out of this. We're gonna have our code, we're gonna push it to GitHub. We're gonna use CI CD with GitHub Actions so we can build and deploy our apps. We're gonna have Azure Functions APIs optionally, and we'll see how you can omit those if you don't want them. You can also route requests from your app to your API that's gonna automatically do this for you with Azure Static Web Apps. We are automatically gonna get a domain with our application with an SSL certificate. We're not gonna set up a custom domain today because you'd all have to go buy one and connect it, but we can show you where that happens. And then also you can get authentication and authorization with your application and global scale, which you get out of the box by basically all of the sites that you deploy. You deploy one site today and Everybody's gonna deploy one. Everything that's deployed is gonna be around the world uh, at the edge. So people in different regions of the world get the fastest access that they can get. So all that's getting there through Azure Static Web Apps. And again, you can choose Angular or React or Svelte or Vue. You could choose other frameworks as well, but we're gonna give you the code for a fully functioning app with one of these four frameworks today. So you can pick which one you want. Uh, and then we're going to show how you can use npm run build to build the assets. And it's going to create the static files, which are in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, the three amigos of the web. And it's going to create these files by running the build process for us while it's deploying. So what ends up up on Azure is going to be your running application. And that's just going to light up our app. The static web apps is what we're going to build. And that's what we're going to get today. And effectively, we're gonna get that built in host of our static web apps up in uh, storage. It's called Azure Storage, right at the edge. So we can use it like a CDN, global scale around the world. We could optionally add authentication, authorization and APIs. And then we're always gonna get CI CD with our GitHub Actions. So here's a quick diagram of how this works. When we start the, the learn module, the workshop in just a moment, you're gonna point your code, your Azure static web app at your code, which is gonna have a folder. In this case, it might be called app on the screen, but it might be view app or Svelte app. And then we're gonna push that up to GitHub, make our changes to it. It'll fire off the CI CD process, which is a GitHub action, which will then deploy the application, which is our static content. And it's gonna then make it globally available to everybody. So once you're done with this workshop in the next 45 minutes, the app that you have will be accessible by everybody else. So effectively, we're gonna publish the, uh, publish the app of Azure Static Web Apps from GitHub. 
We'll get our global scale and we'll get our custom domain. We'll show how we can set up custom domains. And we get all those different fancy things that we just talked about. And all of that comes with Azure Static Web Apps. So as a reminder today, you're gonna to get to pick <clears throat> which one of these you wanna choose from. Now the applications might look different to you. So if you choose a different one than we choose, the only difference is the colors and then the logo on the upper left-hand corner. That's just to differentiate those. But the apps actually run the same thing. And here's the most important part of the workshop. Go to this link. You can go there now. This link, and we'll maybe Craig, you can pop it into the chat again. We'll keep popping it in there. And you'll see it on the next few slides. This is the workshop that we're going to be going through together. So maybe Burke, you can start by jumping over to that link as well. And then we're gonna have a quick exercise on how to use Microsoft Learn. So you might be wondering, because we had some questions in the last session, do I need an Azure account to do this? Yes, you do. But the good news is when you go through this workshop, it gives you one for free automatically. You don't have to sign up with a credit card or anything else like that. It just gives you a free access to what we call a sandbox to Azure. So you can try all this yourself. And to do this, we're gonna go to learn. That's the link right here on the right. So go there now if you'd like to. You're gonna click sign in in the upper right. Now this is probably the hardest piece of this because you're not gonna sign in with your normal email address. You're gonna click a little link below the sign in button. And Burke's gonna show you this. It's called the sign in options. Why? Because then it's gonna allow us to sign in with GitHub. We want you to sign with your GitHub account because that's the easiest way to get into this. And then we're just gonna follow the prompts and do it together. So to kick things off, uh, this is the exercise we're gonna go to. Uh, we'll be walking through this together with Burke in just a moment, but just give you an idea what's gonna happen. You're gonna pick your version of Angular React's filter view. It's gonna lead you to this repository, which will basically copy all the code to your GitHub organization. And if you wanna follow exactly as we do, just call your repo my static web app. That'll be the same name. But if you change the name, it's okay. Just have to use your version of the name. Uh, so with that, you can just click on this link. This link also brings you to the same place. And we're only gonna do the exercises here today, Burke. So we'll kind of skip through some of the, the verbiage on the pages of the workshop. Straight, straight to the good stuff. Yeah. So with that, Burke, why don't I stop sharing and we go to your screen and everybody can start the workshop together. Sounds good. Let me see if I can share. Yeah, I sure can. Share All right, so let me Burke. give you, uh, let me see here. It's not letting me, oh, it wants me to, hold on. I've got a, it wants me to grant Zoom permission in my security uh, preferences. Yes, we must grant. Zoom permission to see the almighty Burke Holland. Oh, but I don't see it. Oh boy, that's a problem. Oh. It often asks you, but you don't, you just have to say, okay. And it just lets you go sometimes. Oh, does it? Let's see here. Give it a shot. Sometimes. Now it def definitely wants me to do it. So give me a second here while, while I try to tweak. In the meantime, uh, for those of you check out the link that Craig put into the chat again. You can run off to that link and you're gonna see the, uh, the learn module, which it'll say at the top of it, publish an Angular, React, Svelte, or view JavaScript app with Azure Static Web Apps. That's the title. Yeah, it's not letting me in. I may have to quit Zoom here and join again. Uh, if that's okay, I will be right back. Sure, we'll see you in just a minute, Burke. So I'll answer some questions while we're, we're kind of getting ready for this. What's the advantage of using Azure Static Web Apps opposed to Azure App Service? Is Static Web Apps cheaper? That's a great question. So there's a lot of different reasons. Azure App Service is a full server. So if you want to bring your own Node Express code or ASP.NET uh, and you want to set up your own global scale and your own SSL and you want to set up your own CDN, uh, if you want to set up Azure Functions separately and then connect it with cores or reverse proxy, yes, you can use Azure App Service. It's a different service. So basically Azure App Service is like taking a server that you normally have on premise or in your company and putting it up in the cloud and using it the way you want to build it. But you have to do all that stuff yourself. With Azure Static Web Apps, you don't have a server. Effectively think of this as serverless for your web app and your functions where you get all the things I just mentioned, but it's just hosted in the cloud. Uh, and today, right now, 
the preview is free. So everything with Azure Static Web Apps is far cheaper because it's free uh, to do this. And uh, they're still figuring out what the pricing model might be. And I can't speak to that until it's actually released at GA, which is effectively the full release uh, for it. But I expect there will be a free version if, if I have my wishes and dreams come true. All right, I'm back. Did you miss me? Hey, Burke, we missed you so much. Good. Well, I have good news and bad news. The good news is I'm back. The bad news is Zoom still cannot connect to share my screen. And I don't know what to do about it besides maybe restart. Um, I don't know what happened. Some sort of update to my Mac. What's it telling you? Oh, it says um, basically everything is grayed out. It's saying system preferences, unknown, unknown. Everything's unknown. That's not good. That's a, yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, so we can try that. If you want to maybe get started while I try to fix this, and maybe I'll be back sure. in five minutes. <laughs> I'll share my screen in the meantime. All right, the joys of a live demo, folks. <laughs> At least you don't have to watch me fix this. I'll be back. All right, so let's make sure. Uh, can I get a quick thumbs up, Craig, uh, Craig or Burke, if I am visible? You guys seeing my screen? All right, I got a thumbs up there, cool. So let me put the chat up too, because then I can kind of see the chat as we're going through it. All right, folks, so we're gonna try this a little different. If Burke can uh, share in a minute, we'll go ahead and we'll switch over to him. So on page one of this page here, the first thing you'll have to do is you'll have to uh, log in if you haven't signed in yet. Now I'm signed in, but I'm gonna show you how this works. You'll see in the upper right-hand corner, there's a icon of a user, a couple circles. If I click on that, you'll see I'm logged in with my Microsoft email. If you're not, you'll see a sign in button. And then that sign in button, you'll want to click on after it uh, brings it up, you want to click on the sign in options right below it, and then choose GitHub as your GitHub account. Once you do that, you can get back to this page and then everything will just, um, just work for you. Hey, John, I think I'm ready to go. Oh, are you? I think so. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> yes, success. All right, you're going to see yourself for a second. No, no, you won't. It's All right, there's the sign-in screen. Because I really wanted to show them the sign-in options thing because I find that confusing sometimes. Yeah, how do I get rid of this? Can you get rid of this bar? Where's the I don't hide video panel? No. Only you see. No. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. So, so what do I do here? in chat saying she doesn't have the GitHub option. If you zoom in real quick, Burke, show everybody that sign in options link. Right there. Jennifer and others, that's what you want to click is sign in options link on the sign in page. It doesn't say GitHub here, but once you click the sign in options link, you'll then have an option for sign in with GitHub as your second one down below. It's safely hidden away. Yeah. Okay, should I sign in? Yeah, why don't you sign in? Some folks are saying they don't have GitHub as a sign-in options. Craig, maybe you can try to help some of those folks too. So Burke, once we're here, you'll see the format is you have your learning objectives and your prereqs. Mm -hmm. We know the learning objectives, we're gonna deploy the app. Down below the prereqs, you've got to be familiar with Angular React's filter view, which I say familiar. If you don't know what they are, then you're probably in the wrong place, right? Well, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but you don't or really know much about them. Do you have a, is there a jQuery option? What about the jQuery option? We should add that. With the Hello Worlds repo, there is. Okay, cool. Uh, second is, if you're gonna do this locally, you're gonna want Node with Git. Uh, you wanna click on that link real quick and show people what that means? This one here? Yeah. Okay. So on this page, you choose the LTS version of Node if you haven't already installed it. LTS stands for long-term support. It's basically the, the version of Node that everybody recommends that you use in production. Uh, and Burke, I assume you already have that? I do. You know what? I can verify that here. Let's, let's. .18 .3. Ooh, I'm a little behind. 
but I'm not going to upgrade it. That's moment. okay. If you're darn close, if you got 12, you're good. Close enough. Uh, a GitHub account because we're going to use GitHub. Do you have a GitHub account, Burke? I do. I'm signed in with my GitHub account. And Visual Studio Code, the best editor ever. That's right. <laughs> enough said. <laughs> and then down below, these are the eight steps, if you will. We'll call you call these units. These are the eight units in the learning experience. One thing you'll notice is that any unit that begins with the word exercise is actually hands-on. And there are only three of these. So why don't we just go step-by-step step through each one of these and click on introduction first. Oh, that's right. First exercise, I skipped over. That's okay. And if you do go to the wrong one, like say how Burke is on unit two of eight. Burke, could you select the dropdown for unit two of eight? You can always go to a different unit right from this menu. So. If we went back to introduction, just to show them how to do it, um, you can click on introduction right there and it would bring over to the, the first page, which basically just explains what an Azure Static Web App is. All right, so now we're on the unit two, which is exercise. Yep. Burke, what are you gonna use? I don't know, let's let's crowdsource it. What do you what do y'all want me to use? Type into the chat which framework of these four you want Burke to use. See, one for Angular, one for React. View, React, it's two for Angular, two for React. Whoa, 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 I can't keep up. I'm seeing a lot of Angular, a lot of React. View, Angular, View, View, Angular, View, I think React, the same Svelte, typing Angular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, can only, you can only vote once, folks. <laughs> oh, man, I, you know what? It's hard to say. It's either Angular or React. Well, I'm going to give you a hint. For everybody out there, if, you're, if you don't care, uh, the, the one that takes longer to build will take longer to deploy because it's got to run through NPM run build. And I'll give you a hint that the longest one to build is Angular uh, and the shortest is Svelte. The other two are so in the middle. Should we use Svelte? Svelte wins. <laughs> Paul's like, that's it. <laughs> Pearl. <laughs> Debates. Oh, yeah. CGI, CGI Ben. PHP. Here we go. And, and honestly, it doesn't matter which one you build because we're not going to be playing with the code much. So why don't we just do All right. Let's use Svelte. I've never done it with Svelte, so here we go. So the cool thing about this is once you select that tool up the top, uh, your web frameworks, the instructions on some of the pages might change. So if there's something slightly different, like we learned in the work, the session before this, where we put the code for these different apps might change. So we'll actually see uh, Svelte show up in our app down below. Okay, Burke, first step, create a repository. Navigate to the create page from the template. I can do that. Yeah. You can just click I always on command that click. I just command click by default on everything now. I do too, but that one there, if you just click it, will open a new tab. Oh shoot. It's gonna want me to sign in with my uh what why? Let me try that again. What's my profile here? It's Gmail. Sign in to, why do I have to authenticate to? I get that now source. too. We work for Microsoft, so they want us to do that. Pick an account. I think I'm gonna have to use my Microsoft account here. Okay. I assume, so. And this is where uh, for folks at home who are playing along with us, you will have to use an account that has access to GitHub, obviously. Uh-oh, don't go to my authentication app, <laughs> y'all. Ignore that number. Too late, I beat you to it. I'll write that down, 52, keys to the kingdom. Okay. All right, so could you zoom in on your browser a little bit too? Yeah. Tell me when to stop, is that good? That is way too good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how about that, a little better? That, that's fantastic. So I'm gonna read the instructions so we don't have to switch back and forth uh, for okay. it. It basically says, uh, enter your repositories my-static-web-app. Yes. Mar, mar. Call it two. Already exists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, one's a, that one already exists too. Uh, <laughs> look at this. There you we'll go. Spell it. We'll be proper. Okay. Somebody doesn't clean up his repos. Oh, I, it's a it's a dumpster fire in there. Uh, now the second thing, and it doesn't say this, and you don't have to do it, everybody, in the steps. And I think I'm going to add it just because I I wrote this module. Um, I like to choose public because then everybody can see your repo. Um, Burke will choose public because then you can see what he's doing, but you don't have to. It could be a private repo if you wanted to. And then it says, click the big green button. Now, 
Yay, it's generating your app. Looks promising. Now, now it says open a terminal on your computer. Oh, I can do that too. You're going to get cloned this locally. Okay. Let me up, up the font size here. Whoa, whoa. No, easy. we don't tell people. Is put it in a folder that you like, everybody. All right. So you want me to clone it? Yes. And there's a command on the learn module for cloning it or oh, just copy it. right. I now. probably shouldn't be going through the module. So yeah. let's clone here. So let's just copy this. I'm going to copy it in. Okay, and you got to change your username to, yep. Now, because you called the repo different too, you'll have to change the name repo too. Yeah. We call it my static web application. That should be right. If not, it'll let us know. Next step is, okay. again, this is on the learn module. So CD. Okay, I'm there. Now the next step says to CD into the Svelte app. Now this is where it will differ based on whether you chose Angular, React, Vue, or Svelte. Yeah. In fact, if we look at the folders, we can see, depending on which one you, you got. So let's copy in. All right, I'm there. Feeling good. Next, npm install. Oh, I know. Oh, I know that Not before. By the way, one of the tricks you showed me, John, when I first started here was that you could just do this. I didn't know that. <laughs> I've been working with npm for like a decade. No. Yeah. I love short eh, Eight years. Yeah. You know, Scott Hanselman says that you only get so many keystrokes in your lifetime. So That's I a really morbid way to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I get the sentiment, but it's kind of like, you know, every second brings you one second closer to death. Like, could we talk about something else? All right. All right. And then the final step is to run npm run dev. And you can copy that from step six. So what we've just done, everybody, is Burke and all of you have created the repo in your own GitHub organization. You've cloned it locally. You've run npm install in the folder. So you get all your dependencies. And now we're just making sure it works. So once you make sure it works, then Burke, it says to click on localhost 5000 because yours is Svelte. Does it actually say that? Up in your browser. Yeah, it does. Localhost 5000. Just checking your work here. Look at that. That is fast, man. That's really fast. So there, the, there's the app and it's happy. And if yours is a different port, that's because um, you're running React, View, Angular, so on or so forth. Yeah. So some folks in the chat are asking for the link to the learn module. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there. If I can grab it real quick, because I will take Craig's, it wrong. Craig's got it. Yeah, Craig's way ahead of me as always. So yeah, Jenna, there you go. So that was exercise one. Uh, let's flip back to the learn module. Okay, okay. I can do, oh, it's right here. Now at the bottom of the learn module, you'll see that it's a picture of the Svelte app. If yours is green, that means you chose the Vue app. If yours is blue, you chose the React app. And if it's red, you chose the Angular app. If it's not one of these four colors, then I don't know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl. Pearl, there you go. Cobol.net. So at the very bottom then it says, stop running the app by hitting Control C in your Control terminal. Control C, okay. All right. It's stopped. Yep. It's dead. Yep. And we're getting a question, which we always get to uh, in the chat. And Craig might be answering this there, but I'll, I'll do it verbally too, because I, I get it a lot. Um, and Craig says, yes, Git comes with NPM and Node. So if you install Node from the link that we had in the prereqs, which is on the uh, first page of the link to this learn module, when you install that, it gives you Git. Local Are you NPM. serious? It just, yeah. I did not know that. I don't know how I feel about that. It also comes with a lot of things these days. Like it even comes, there's an older version of Git that comes with a Mac too. Huh. It's just baked in already. All right. All right. Let's hit the continue button, Burke. I know how to do that. Now this is, we said we're just gonna go through exercises. So this is just explaining what we're about to do. So we can just scroll through here and look at the main headers. We're gonna connect our GitHub instance to GitHub, uh, our static web app to GitHub next, which means we're gonna need to know where's our app located. Uh, we don't have an API, so we don't care about that, but we need to know where does Svelte put its app artifacts, which is just a fancy word for when Svelte builds, where does it put the files? And then it's going to create this GitHub action. And we can skip the functions part because we're not doing that in this one. It's just telling us what they are. 
Oh, nice. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's go to the second exercise, which is unit four of eight. Rock and roll. Oh, it's making me a sandbox. Yeah. So right at the top of the page is activate sandbox for all of you. Click that button and it will take like a minute to do. Burke has one, which is now available for 47 more minutes. <laughs> yeah, I was obviously I've used, <laughs> I was doing this earlier today. Yeah, I think, I think it's wait just a minute hours. to let, yeah, it's four hours. We should wait to let folks, let's give it like, I think it takes about a minute. Yeah, so it should take a minute. It might even ask you to give permissions to it real quick. Uh, it's just going to allow you to use that sandbox. Uh, and then notice it still says Svelte on Burke's screen because that's what he chose before. So it remembers your selection. Nice. Everybody, was anybody able to get their sandbox activated? I want to see what, what the time looks like. People still waiting. It's got a couple of steps. Like you create it and it's like review the permissions and then it reloads. It's at 50% for a couple of folks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It usually right. takes like a minute, minute and a half at most for me. I, I don't exactly know what, sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. I imagine somebody like Burke is sitting in the background at some server farm, grabbing a hard drive, <laughs> eat, eating his grilled cheese sandwich. He goes, oh, darn, I got to get up there and go. And there's a, yeah, there's a text message. Someone needs a sandbox. <laughs> Turn it on. There's a beeper. Yeah. The beeper goes off. Well, the nice thing is once you get it created, it comes back really quickly. <laughs> it's yes. good for four hours. All right. So I like sandboxes because you don't have to have an Azure account, which a lot of people just don't or they don't want to use their corporate one. And so it's just a great way to explore it without having to sign up for anything. Oh, Mac McAfee. Oh yeah, I didn't, virus. Well, virus the good news is uh, the only reason we had you use Node is to run the app locally. If you don't want to worry about that, if you just want to uh, deploy the app through the cloud, you don't actually have to use Node. Node was only used for the step that we just did. Yeah, so we're not going to use it again, to, believe it or not. Yeah, we're not going to use it again. So if you want to continue and deploy the app to the cloud without it, that'll work too. Although I really don't appreciate McAfee with his, their over overbearing <laughs> st stance on Node. I virus, like that's a little virus bit alarmist. Where itself sometimes can really be a... Yeah, it's like virus software is a virus. Ooh, Inception. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the next steps here. What do we have to do? You're going to create a static web app. And they want you to install this Azure static web app extension for VS Code. Okay, let's 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 do that. So that's the first step is installing this extension. Yes. So go to the marketplace. Okay. And here we are. And install. Uh, I got it. Continue. It wants to open it. Okay. Oh, and it opened it. It opened my window over here. That's fine. I guess we haven't opened VS Code yet. Oh, it just opens it. In it doesn't actually install it. It just takes you to it. And then I guess you got to click install again. Yeah, it op basically opens the extension in VS Code, so then you can say install. Gotcha. Uh, okay, that, that was quick. It's, it's like, <laughs> it's, not a very it's as if software. <laughs> it's as if I had it cached or something. So Neil, if you're seeing the uh, message, I've seen this before, the extension is incompatible to your version of VS Code. It's likely your version of VS Code is old. You might need to update. Can you show them where? Yep, the, down where here on the bottom right, we got a gear. You can click on that and then, um, and actually let me let me toggle my sidebar, sorry, y'all. I put mine on the right. We don't have to talk about that. Um, it's on the left for most of you. <laughs> this probably looks better. Uh, and just check for updates. But you actually should see a little number on your wheel. I think it's, a, it should say like one or something, I think. Isn't that what we do for updates? If you just click on that, um, you can install the update. Yeah, check for updates and get it there. What happens is, long story short, extensions can require a certain version of VS Code. And it looks like it may have required one that uh, yours is older than that. So Burks is good to go. Let's go back to the learn module. And it says, once you've installed that marketplace, uh, you might need to reload. Now you didn't 
get prompted for reload. So you don't have, I did to. not get prompted. Um, but you may, um, over on the left hand side, you should see it. But if you see three dots, like some ellipses like this, it could be there. If you have a bunch of these, it'll collapse them. So you can look here. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can just right click and make sure, see if it's in this menu here. And if it's not checked, put a check by it. Yep. So uh, if you don't see the Azure symbol, as Burke is saying, uh, make sure that if you see three dots, that's there. Uh, another way to look for that would be to refresh VS Code. Can you show them how to do that real yep. quick? Just type, you're going to, sorry. But so it's, it. you're going to do um, F1. So F1, if you, if your function keys are functional, if not command shift P on a Mac on, on windows, it's control shift P like this. And this gives you what's called the command, uh, command palette. And then just look for reload and reload window. It's like hitting refresh in your browser. Sometimes that helps load stuff up. Cool. All right, so then the next thing we have to do is sign in to uh, Azure. So it says, go to the command palette. I'm here. Let me get, I got rid of those other ones so that it looks like everybody else is here. You can also click oh, that button, sign into Azure, by the way. So, but it wants me to go, let's, let's do it with the module. So let me come back here. Yeah, it says command palette, sign view in. View command palette and Azure sign in. So view command palette, Azure sign in. And you might okay. already be in Burke, but they wouldn't. Nope. Be. You know what? I, I signed out this morning to make this magical. I'm going to use this one, which is what I signed in to learn with. This is my Microsoft account. All done. We're there. Cool. So the next step is scrolling down. Now you're going to go follow the prompts, which you did. Open VS Code and go to File, Open Folder to wherever you put your code. Okay. So File, Open Folder. I don't have Open Folder. Just do Open. Yep. Okay. I'll take a note on that. All right. In my stack web it. application. And just this whole, the whole thing here. Uh, I can't read, it's too small, but yes, just hit open right on that main thing. Oh, I, I wish I could make this bigger. Yeah, so I see all of the different apps in here, the different languages, even though I'm only using Svelte. Yes, you should see them all. Okay, I do. Ah, glad you found a way, Ellie. Uh, yeah, the icon might be disappeared. Another thing, sometimes those icons don't show up on, on the left-hand side unless you right-click and you select them. Like if it's not checkboxed, Burke, can you show that real quick? Uh, you right click on the Azure icon on the left. Oh. Yeah, like if Burke unchecks Azure, watch what happens to it on the screen. It will disappear. Goes away. Yeah. So sometimes I accidentally do this. <laughs> All right, so then the next thing is to go to the Azure button. Clicked and it you're in there. Clicked cool. It. And then at the top, uh, you've got to select your concierge subscription, which Burke, you have yours there. If you don't, then there's a step there to do it. Uh, and you're click, click the big plus button at the top, Burke. We're going to create the static web apps. Enter a name. My second <laughs> static <laughs> web app, <laughs> since my first one is already there. Way to prepare for the demo, Burke. All right, press enter, choose a branch, main. Main sounds like a better branch. And then which you're on number three of six, you're gonna choose Svelte app. This is where you would choose view or react app or whatever you all chose. Uh, for step four, you can choose slash or you can scroll to the bottom and choose skip for now. Which by the way, uh, I just made a pull request to put that at the top of the list. Yeah, I was about to say that is hidden. Yes, but you can choose anything here because we're not going to deploy an API. So choose skip for now. Next step uh, for Svelte, you're going to choose public. Public, okay. And then All right. step 10, select whatever region makes you happiest. Ah, Central US is probably close to me. Uh-oh, you do not have permission to create a, 
I can't, the zoom bars in the rest. I can't. Yes. And everybody in the learn module, you can see this exact message in the learn module. Uh, basically it means you need to select the, the sandbox. So hit select existing. Okay. It's basically going to point you at the free Azure sub and then select whatever that long name is. There we go. Yeah. So essentially what happens in Azure is you have to have a resource group, which is just sort of a, I don't know, how do you describe it? It's just a group that you put related resources in, yeah. but in the sandbox, you're not allowed to create one. They create one for you. And that's, you, so you just reuse that same resource group. Now we can see that it actually made this already for you. So over on the left, what I want you to do next in step 14 is right click on my second static web app. <laughs> and choose open in portal. And you might want to zoom in a little bit for folks. Effectively, your page should look something like this. Um, Burks, I always love the names, by the way. In the URL, you'll see an interesting name. Burks is a calm mushroom. Um, oh yeah, right here. Fantastic. Better than a paranoid mushroom. I guess so. So that's where the URL will be for the website once it's deployed. <clears throat> if you click on that link, uh, the blue link, sorry, at the top, the big blue bar. This one? Yes. Okay. Uh, click on that, it will bring us to the runs. This is the runs for the actions and notice that yours is still yellow because it's still running. Okay. And then I want you to click on Azure Static Web Apps CICD, which you're already on it. Uh, then click the topmost commit that's titled similar to CI add Azure Static Web Apps. Then click on the deploy and deploy, sorry, build and deploy job link on the left. Oh, it's, it looks like it's finished. And notice everything is green and it's got a check mark. Yep. So this is where you can watch your builds. Okay. All right, the Excuse next step me. is to uh, view the website. Want to show them how to do that? Sorry, just wanted to let you guys know you have approximately four minutes until the next, until the next break. Ah, the all right. We got Thank about you. six minutes to go, so we'll go slightly quicker. Sorry, I didn't hear. Just click on the URL here. Yeah, so there you click on your calm mushroom. And there's your app running up into uh, Azure. Perfect. All right, so, so let's go back and we've done all this. Yeah, we had a couple of people who struggled there. Some people got stuck on the sandbox. I saw it's waiting for permissions there. Uh, Camille, I know Craig's working with you on that. If we run out of time here, find us on Twitter. Uh, you can find me, John underscore Papa on Twitter afterwards, and I will work with you offline. Craig and I do that. I won't volunteer Burke. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it too. Okay, Burke will do yeah, it too. So offline. we can do that too. Yeah, exactly. Jenna's like, find me offline, online. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> offline, online. Out of this session. Let's put it that way. All right. Well, you, so should we skip to the exercise to speed this up here a little bit? Yeah, just go right to the exercise. The one thing we didn't do quite yet uh, was if you go back to the running app, Burke, if you refresh on that page, since it's at a products hyperlink, it's going to say not found. So we want to fix that for everybody. That's what the next exercise is going to do. So jump as right we should that. note that it works as if you navigate, it's when you try to go directly to the page, that's when it fails, which yeah. is because the browser doesn't know what that this URL exists, but the application does. So we need to figure out a way to tell it to route all traffic back to this base URL so that it can then take care of the routing on the front end. So we have to jump back to VS Code in unit six. That's the last exercise. Uh, and the first uh, yeah. thing you gotta do is you have to pull the code. Pull the latest code, yeah. So yes. I'm gonna do that by clicking down here in the status bar. Which and the reason just... we're doing this is because that work, that action file needs to come down. It's in the GitHub workflows folder that Burke is now opening up. If you wanna show it to him real quick, that'd be cool. Now we're gonna create a new file called routes.json inside of our Svelte app slash public folder. So new file routes.json. And then you wanna flip back over to learn because you're gonna copy the contents of that and paste it into the file. 
And this is basically saying that if somebody tries to go to slash products, like Burke just refreshed on that, it's going to automatically redirect to index HTML. So you don't get that 404. Now you need to commit those changes. Uh, add fallback route and then commit them by hitting command enter or pressing the button. And then you can push those up, which Burke likes to do is by hitting the bottom left-hand button. Yeah, I'm hitting this button down here in the status bar. It doesn't look like a button, but it is. Now it basically says to go try the fallback route once it's done, but we need to jump over to the actions in GitHub so we can see it building. So if you click back on actions, you'll see a yellow dot again because it's rebuilding the app because he pushed up changes. So on build and deploy on the left, which he clicked on, we're seeing it's, it's yellow. This step here is basically setting up the environment to do the build before the deploy. Uh, the step after that, the run actions and build and deploy, that's when it actually runs NPM install and will deploy the site. I think the whole thing takes about a minute and a half. Yeah, you can see it doing its thing here. Lots of strange words like Oryx. So Jenna doesn't NPM use install. Twitter. Ah. Oh, Jenna, you are you are ahead of the game. No, I, you know I'm on Twitter, but I don't. I'm not. I'm not super happy about it. I will put a secret email address that only you can see. I'm kidding. I I honestly I think you're better off. <laughs> there you go. Can, am I so, to Jenna, if you want to email me at Microsoft, I'd be happy to help you out there too. We can connect you, me and Craig and Burke, that way. Perfect. Or any of you, for that matter. Finished. It's finished. Cool. It's finished. Oh, thank you oh, for awesome. using Azure Static Web Apps. It even thanked me. Okay. It's very kind. So it's green. So now you should be able to go back to the website, Burke, and you should be able to go to products and hit the refresh button and you will no longer get a uh, 404. Yeah. So I don't, it looks like nothing happened, but up here in this URL now, if we went straight to products or about, so let's just grab this, do a new tab and paste it in. No, I have tried collections many times and it works. It goes directly there. So because we're, we're short on time, we're going we're gonna to skip the knowledge check. But if you do the knowledge check, if you like to gamify your lives, everybody, in Learn, there's a knowledge check that you can run, which basically asks you three questions. And if you answer these right, you get points on the platform, which is really kind of cool and fun. Basically just reinforces what you've learned. Burke, you mind if I share my screen real quick? Could you unshare it? Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me kill it one second here. Stop share. All right, I'll so show you, you all the links where you can get everything we just did, everybody. All right, so I will go zim past all this. So here's the links for everything we just did. You can try offline. You can go to learn at the link at the top. That's what we just did today. If you want to look into more um, advanced scenarios, we have ATO 20 uh, SWA, which is all of our documentation. And if you want to try Blazor or jQuery, as Burke said, if you go to this repo at the bottom, you can use one of those repos. Uh, sorry, one of the examples in that repo for uh, trying this out too. And I'll click on it so you can see what that does. Um, no, remind me later, GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the worst time for that. I know. <laughs> yeah, here's my security key. There you go, everybody. Uh, so if you're using Alpine, Angular, Aurelia, Backbone, Elm, Glimmer, Ionic, jQuery, Marco, Polo, um, whatever you want, basically you can grab this repo. There's an example of all of these in there. And we even tell you what the build steps you can run are, what folder is the artifact folder that you're going to serve, and what folder to find the, the code in. So there's like 31 or 32 web frameworks on this repo. And it's all there for you at the link at the bottom of the page. Everybody, Perfect. I want to thank you all for coming. And thank you, Burke, for uh, bearing through your screen sharing fun today. And thank you My all apologies. for being here first. And everybody, thank Craig in the chat for being a great sport, for answering all the hard questions. Yeah, thanks for coming. And thanks for asking the questions. All great questions. It's always great when people are brave enough to ask. Thank you.